Hi, my name's Dan, and in this video I'm going to show you how to edit geometry objects in your world. So I've uh, just started with a third-person template map uh, with a standard uh, content, the starter content involved. Uh, not that we're going to use any of that. Uh, we're going to use a, a couple of uh, geometry objects uh, from up here. If you want to know uh, a bit more about how to get started with the geometry objects, look at my other video on that. So. The aim that I'm going to have in this video is I'm going to use the geometry objects to create a hut, um, which is going to show you several aspects of the editing of objects. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've, I've put a box in there, and I'm just going to change the size of this box. Um, it's currently 200 by 200 by 200, and I'm just going to change it to 600 in each dimension. 600, 600. 600, and that just gives a reasonable size uh, box there. I need to pick it up and then drop it down onto the uh, onto the object below using N. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is I actually want to make this hollow so that it's got an inside and an outside. At the moment, it's just got an outside. So down here on the Rough settings, I can click on hollow and that'll create an inside for me as well as the outside. Um, and I hope that that's happened. Yes, I'm going to zoom inside and I can see there's an inside of that. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the, uh, the doorway. Uh, most of this is not uh, actually editing of the, the brush yet. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but uh, I'm going to do a doorway. It's a fairly simple doorway just by adding another uh, box brush and making that subtracted. And just check that that's not sat down on the floor either. So I'm just going to do uh, drop that down as again. And then uh, change that. So I need the brush properties. Change that to be subtracted. Um, and at the moment, it's just kind of got this flickering effect there on the ground because it's really I'm going to lift that up very slightly so that we've got like a, a rip under our floor inside the, uh, inside our hut. Right, the hut isn't very much a hut shape and that's where we get to actually doing some editing of this shape. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you're used to older versions of Unreal you might have seen that there was uh, some modes up here, where there's now just place actors, those modes have been moved across to here. If you've not used to older versions, don't worry about that little comment. What you need in here is in the modes tool, you want the brush editing. I'm just going to click on that, and that um, gives us an extra uh, tab over here. That's just giving us some information, um, but the tools that we want are actually just across the top. And there are various tools you can use here. I'm just going to show you um, a couple of the most straightforward ones. So in this mode, when we've got brush editing in, we can not only select the object as a whole, but we can select individual uh, surfaces in there. So that's an outside surface, that's an outside surface, outside surface. We can also select uh, vertices, which are the corners, and we can select edges, which is the trickiest bit. Yes, managed it first time, that's great. So I've got this side edge, and uh, the thing that I'm going to want to do is, what I want to do is alter the edit, uh, alter the shape of the top of this box to give it a roof shape. Um, and so having selected an edge, uh, what I want to do is to split so that it's going to create some extra vertices halfway up this, uh, this edge that I've selected, and it's going to work out that it wants to do it uh, for all of the upright edges. Um, so there we go. I just clicked split and it's created these extra vertices. Now, the reason for doing that is because uh, while I want to have a, a sloped top, I don't want the whole thing to be sloped. So below halfway down, I want to turn that into uh, something that's uh, obviously flatter. Um, Right, now, uh, I'm just trying to see if I can... The, there is no plane surface, obviously, because that's inside, so I'll 
potentially going to manipulate a play. And we'll do that in a bit. Uh, let's do uh, making the top slope. So what I'm going to do is select one of the vertices. Um, and I actually want to group select all of the vertices. So I'm going to, having selected the first one, we're going to hold control on the keyboard and click on another one. So that's selected two. Oh, it's preempting there the fact that you can move. Um, uh, the two. So I'm, I'm selecting, because it's hollow, there's an outside vertex and an inside vertex. Um, and because I'm using control click, you'll see that all the other vertices that I've selected will become orange. Now I could move all of these um, together just by using the manipulate tool uh, there, and you can see you can move vertices about. Uh, but the, the thing that I'm going to want to do is to actually merge these vertices so that you've got a peak at the top and the tool that we want for this is the weld. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to weld them all at the first selected vertex which was the one that's over here um, which means we're going to have to reposition that. Click weld and ah, it's actually done it over there, I don't know why. And then we've got that vertex selected and we can move that about. I'm using the the XY movement, I'm just going to do this by I to get this in the center. Right. There we go, that seems reasonable. Um, so, very quickly, we've managed to alter the shape of that quite substantially. Now, I'll just click play and show that. We've got a roof, it's not perfect, and we've got the ability to run inside. Um, so in the, uh, I'll just show a couple of other things inside here. Uh, obviously you can, uh, we've had a vertex selected. Uh, you can uh, hit the other tools on a vertex that's selected for rotate, but rotating a vertex uh, makes no sense. That's actually rotating the whole thing, which is interesting. Um, you've also got scale, and that's scaling the whole thing. Um, should be that if I've just got one vertex selected, there we go. Well, I've kind of had the whole thing selected. I'm moving the mouse, you'll have to trust me, because that's not scaling, because the vertex doesn't scale, it's just a point in space. Similarly, if I try and rotate that vertex, it has no effect. Um, but if I reposition the vertex, obviously it does have an effect. We can do uh, similar things with, and this is not going to mess up our shape, but I'm going to select a, uh, an edge, we can move the edge about which works out what has to happen to the other vertices and edges. Uh, can we rotate? I wonder what will happen. No, that doesn't make sense. Can we scale? No, we can't. I can also select a face. Um, can I scale a face? Yes, I can. That's going to give us quite a crazy shape. Hook there. Yeah. We can also... Um, move that face and the other faces move and recalculate uh, and rotate. Does that work on a face? No, it doesn't. Okay. So you get a little widget uh, that you can use to manipulate things. You can select faces separately. You can select um, vertices. That's the point. Separately, you can select the edges if you can manage to get them. You can merge things. You can. Uh, we've shown split as well for uh, lines. Uh, if we select a face and clicks, uh, try and do split, we can't. Um, uh, you can do flip, which makes it for the other way, uh, which is not much use for us in this particular circumstance. And there's, fairly other, uh, there's a few other things, but I'm not going to go into the advanced stuff uh, because I just wanted to show you some basics. Uh, we've kind of messed up the shape of our. Uh, Crazy hook there. Oh, our subtractive thing is um, not embedded deeply enough to uh, to actually give us a full draw. Uh, in fact, this is this has been significantly messed up by our movements because actually I've had things selected on the outside, but the inside hasn't been selected. Uh, so I've messed up my hut, but at least hopefully I've shown you that you can do some manipulation of these shapes and. If you understand what you're doing, 
this is a very powerful tool. Uh, once again, I'm going to remind you that uh, these geometry objects are quite computationally expensive. So after you've uh, created whatever it is that you want to create, you probably want to turn it into a static mesh, which will be the subject of the next video. But that's it from me for now. Mm -hmm.